It is the next morning. And as you can see, the CA medium soaked in a bit before it cured. I'm now going to just add a little bit of the CA thin. I don't know if this is going to be a good idea or not. I'm just going to put a little tiny drop on there. And let that soak in good. Once again, I am not going to use the curing agent. Well, a couple of minutes has passed now. And I think it's probably set. Kind of hard to tell. Guess I'll try it. I'll know when I try to move it because I'll bet it's stuck to my little uh, cloth here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's hard. Now, I don't know if this is a good idea. But I'm just going to put a little drop here. Now you notice it did run down the side and it probably soaked in a little bit. But I know from experience that polish has the same effect as CA glue. So it's not going to change the color of the wood. And I'm just hoping it's just going to strengthen it just a little bit right here. Well, let's just check and see. Is that hard now? Or is it still soft? No, it's still soft. Let's sort of spread it out a little bit then. Maybe I will use the curing agent. Just check first. Yeah, it's still soft. Okay, that's cured now. Well, we'll uh, check the inside of the brass tube, make sure there's no CA glue in there, and then we'll stick it back on the lathe and turn it down some more. Very carefully. Now this is one time that I want my scrapers as sharp as reasonably possible. Now the reason I say reasonably is because I can't do it as professionally as uh, people who make knives and stuff like that, but uh, uh, this machine gets it reasonable. Very reasonable. And I put these little marks on here because uh, it's possible that since the last time I used this machine, I may have bumped this and the angle is out. But so far it hasn't happened, but I check anyway. And what will happen is, if everything is the same, these two little black marks that I put on here, I don't know if you can see them or not, they will grind away evenly, not more on the toe than the heel, if you know what I mean. So let's give it a try. Perfect. Oh, by the way, in case you're thinking this is water soluble and it just washed away, it won't wash away with water. It has to be ground away. Now I'm thinking that because I've got it a little bit more uneven on the top here than it was before, I did the CA glue thing, I better just touch it up a little bit. I'm just going to do it by hand. It's probably only going to shorten the overall length of the brass tube, maybe a thousandth of an inch. I just want to scrape off the excess CA glue. And also here where it ran down on this end here, you can see. Anyway.
well, we're almost back to where we were. Now in a case like this, rather than bring my scraper straight in and slightly start touching it, if you know what I mean, what I'll sometimes do is I'll bring the scraper in at a bit of an angle and then I'll use the tool rest as a fulcrum and then I'll just sort of twist it on the tool rest and that way your mistakes are sort of divided up from the far end of your handle to the end here. So uh, it's kind of like holding your breath when you're doing target practice and shooting in between your heartbeats. <laughs> anyway, so we'll see what happens here. I'm almost scared to start. Well, I could be wrong, but I think by the time I get through with the sandpaper, I'm going to hardly be able to tell where that little flaw is. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's take this one down now. Now my thinking is that if I can have this one a little bit larger than it's supposed to be, it will sort of match up with the end here once I get this sanded down. So that this, this right about where my finger is will be the same diameter as the end of this. And in that way, uh, the grain will have a tendency to line up better. Let's see if I can loosen this here a bit and turn this. you see what I'm talking about here. Okay. All right, here we go. Now, you notice how when this comes together, this continues on here. At least that's my thinking. Let's turn it this way. You notice these two here, they sort of line up here, or should. And it'll just sort of match up better. 
That is, if the cap is screwed in place in the right way. I think there's two or three different ways it can go on. Only one way would be what you would call the correct way. But who's going to bother, right? Anyway, I'm sure glad, I'm sure pleased the way this came out. It's uh, turned out actually better than I thought it was going to. Now, many of you have seen me do this before, but there might be somebody who this is the first time. So what I'm doing here is I'm wiping from the center of the blank to the outside. And that way, you're probably going to notice on the sandpaper there's a little bit of dark area. Well, that's metal filings from the bushing. I don't want to get that rubbed into the wood. So I'm wiping from the center out to the bushing. Now this problem of picking up the iron filings only happens with the fine grain sandpaper like 600, 800, 1000 and so on. It also happens when I use the polish that has the grit in it. After I've sanded with each sandpaper I take that same grit and I sand laterally. That just helps to get the circular scratches off. Not perfect but it helps. Now I don't know if this actually helps, but my thinking is that if I get all of the sawdust out of the pores, at least as much as I can, that way more wax can get in. Now, maybe I'm thinking about it backwards. Maybe I should leave the sawdust in there to help mix with the wax. I don't know. Anyway, I'm doing it this way. This is the polish that I'm going to start out with. I'll probably do it two times. It's got a grit in it, and you're going to notice that the bushing, the metal in the bushing is going to come off into the paper. And so what I'll be doing is, until I get all of the excess polish off, I'll be going from the inside out, like this. Okay, I'm slowed down here to about 300 RPM. I don't want to be building up heat, that's why I'm keeping the RPM down. There, you see what I was talking about?
I think I pretty well got it now. Okay, now we'll crank the RPM up. that's pretty much the way it's going to look. It will become more shiny, but the color is about the way it's going to be. That looks nice. Now I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to have the lathe turning in the other direction. I don't know if it makes any difference, but it makes me feel good. Once again, I don't know if this makes any difference, but it makes me feel like I'm doing something. Okay, now we'll switch polishes. Start using a polish that has no grit. Now this polish, like I say, it has no grit. It's a friction polish. So what I'm going to want to do is make sure I'm not building up heat. And to do that, I keep the RPM down until I get the excess wiped off. Because once I build up heat, it sort of makes it set. And I'm going to wipe off the excess. Then I'll crank the RPM, build up some heat. I can see a little bit of a change. It's a little bit more glossy. So I'm going to do that three or four more times and that should be good. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's beautiful. I wouldn't be at all ashamed to have that sitting on my desk. Yeah, I think it's going to match up pretty good. <laughs> 